Thank you. I'm Jessica. Uh, I came to my first odd salon five years ago. So, woo! Um, <laughs> long time listener, first time speaker, but I have basically the best topic in the world. And I'm so excited to share it with you. Um, Hypatia is basically the most badass woman in human history. Uh, I'm certainly biased because I've been studying her for the last few weeks, but I was first introduced to her as a child uh, by none other than this sweet silver fox. Uh, you might recognize Carl Sagan. Science! <laughs> uh, some of you may have seen his PBS special, The Cosmos. Uh, it's 780 minutes of the illustrious histories of a bunch of smart old white guys who laid the foundation of knowledge upon which our Western civilization is built today. But if you paid special attention to it, you, like me, noticed that for a whole four and a half minutes, he spoke instead about a woman. As the proud owner of a vagina, even then I was over the moon. <laughs> Her name was Hypatia, and she basically single-handedly changed the course of science, <laughs> philosophy, astronomy, and mathematics, all at a time when women had basically no standing in society. Before I go any further, I'll address the ancient elephant in the room. For all the language nerds out there, I took five years of Latin in school. I know you can say her name like Hypatia or Hi, Patia. I'm going to keep calling her Hypatia because that's how Carl introduced her to me. And also, I'm also a badass boss lady, and I said so. <laughs> <laughs> to understand Hypatia, it's important to understand the place she came from. She was born in the port city of Alexandria in Egypt between 350 and 370 AD. I, this, she never left, so there's a couple ships in here. I tried to get as many as I could. <laughs> Alexandria was founded by Alexander the Great in 330 BC, and it quickly became a center of culture and learning in the ancient world. It housed one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, which was a lighthouse. It also uh, housed the famed Library of Alexandria that housed over half a million scrolls of pure, unadulterated knowledge. Um, un unfortunately, Julius Caesar accidentally burned down <laughs> the Library of Alexandria when he conquered Alexandria for Rome in 48 BC, but luckily parts of it survived and Alexandria survived as a center for knowledge for the next 400 years. Um, then we, we come to the time of Hypatia. She was the daughter of an eminent astronomer and mathematician named Theon. Wait, <laughs> not that Theon. He lacked the necessary parts to make a badass boss baby like Hypatia. It was instead this Theon, the one who was famous for his commentaries on Euclid and Ptolemy, and who also successfully predicted both solar and lunar eclipses. It was said that Hypatia quickly surpassed her father's intellect. As a teenager, she was collaborating on his works, and some scholars say that she so heavily corrected his work that some of his works, like his revised version of Ptolemy's Almagest, were actually the work of Hypatia. A renowned physicist and astronomer, she was known to successfully construct things like hydrometers to test the density of liquids as well as astrolabes to measure the distance and movements of the heavenly bodies. Science! Not only was she the first female mathematician in all of recorded history, when her father died, she became the foremost mathematician in the world. In addition, for 15 centuries, she held the title of the most renowned female scientist until she was ousted by that wily minx Marie Curie when she won the Nobel Prize. Socrates Scholasticus said of her, that she surpassed all philosophers of her time. 
She was lecturing in her 20s and was a very popular teacher, both in classrooms and public squares across Alexandria. She became the headmaster of the Neoplatonic School of Alexandria not too long later. Donning the robes of the academic elite, something done only by men in that time, um, she aimed to lead her students to the deepest revelations of cosmic and divine truths. Around her formed a community of inspired students, many of them high-born and holding the highest offices in government and church. Described as exceedingly beautiful and fair of form, articulate and logical in speech, she was also prudent and public-spirited in her actions. Being such a catch, she had a lot of suitors and many marriage proposals, but she remained single and celibate her entire life. One of those suitors was so persistent that in frustration one day, she shoved her bloodied sanitary rags at him, saying, this is what you love. You don't love beauty for its own sake. Even in this really harsh rejection, she found a way to redirect his thoughts to the concept of beauty so transcendent that it could never be attached to a fleeting human form. The biggest pro tip from this, ladies, is if you have someone who just doesn't take no for an answer, I'm pretty sure this trick will still work. <laughs> While Hypatia was transcending the material world, unfortunately it was descending in chaos all around her. She was an outspoken pagan, but many of her students and friends were of all faiths, and she embraced them all, as did her friend Orestes. Orestes was the prefect of Alexandria, appointed by the Roman Empire with governing the city. Um, and unfortunately for Orestes, as he was trying to unite all the religious groups of Alexandria, the bishop of Alexandria named Theophilus was launching a campaign against the pagans and forcibly appropriating their temples. Luckily, uh, Theophilus died, but unluckily he was replaced by his nephew, Cyril, who was described as impetuous and relentlessly power-hungry. He launched a campaign against all of the weaker Christian sects first, and then the Jews for dancing too much on Saturdays. Uh, the Jews somewhat successfully fought back, so Cyril rounded up a mob and attacked their synagogue, driving them out of town. So all of this really pissed off Orestes. Uh, he reached out to the emperor for assistance, and Cyril's mob, knowing they needed to shut him up before help arrived, threw a giant rock at his head, successfully striking him and almost killing him. This was when the yet-to-be-invented light bulb went off for Cyril. It was well known that Hypatia and Orestes were basically besties. Uh, he sought her advice. He was protected and supported by her friends in high places. When it came to Alexandria, Hypatia was considered both brilliant and beloved. Um, so to answer the question posed by another fierce female, Saint Beyonce, who run this mother? Hypatia did, and if Cyril wanted to win, he would have to defeat her. He launched a smear campaign claiming that she was a vile witch using satanic spells and black magic to control Orestes, uh, preventing him from reconciling with the church. Tragically, those rumors worked on his angry, evil mob, and on a fateful day in March of 415, they intercepted an unsuspecting Hypatia. They dragged her forcibly and stripped her naked, and using broken bits of pottery and shells, they flayed flesh from bone. They dragged her remains behind a carriage, and whatever this means, her attackers were seen to use her dismembered body parts most shamefully. The city and empire were shocked and horrified. Orestes left his office and the city in disgust. He was never heard from again. Cyril gained control of the city, and his mob of attackers were never held to account for this crime. But her story doesn't end there, because she's Hypatia. For centuries to follow, scholars, priests, and feminists have used her story to assert their views. Authors like Voltaire and Toland used her as an example of why to condemn the church and all religion. 
Scientists hailed her as a fallen hero in the war between faith and reason. Some Christians claimed that the killing of a witch was but the will of God, while others ironically established her as a, a symbol of Christian virtue. Many debatably point to her death as the moment that Europe moved from a period of enlightenment into the Dark Ages. But what does she mean to us today? For really nerdy girls like me, her legacy showed us that you don't have to be an old white guy to love and contribute to the field of science. <laughs> Those four minutes with Carl Sagan were enough to give me enough courage to publish my first papers on neuroscience at the sweet age of 16. Uh, and women like her were the ones who paved the way for women like me to take stages to talk about how science, innovation, and compassion can create a better world. Hypatia showed us that the fiercest rebels don't always take up arms. Sometimes they res resist peacefully and try to quell violence, ignorance, and intolerance with the relentless pursuit of knowledge, even at the cost of their own lives. Whether or not Hypatia meant to pave a path forward for women like me, she's become a guiding light in our cosmos, showing us that we can blaze our own trails. So, to paraphrase the immortal words of some other fierce females, let's raise a glass uh, to quote or paraphrase Destiny's Child <laughs> to all the women who are independent, to all the honeys making money, to all the ladies who truly feel me, to our allies, and to Hypatia, throw your hands up at me. Thank you.